It's the first and probably least interesting part of my London holiday vlog. Ahoy everybody and yes I am in London. As some of you know I'm here for five nights watching the Divine Comedy live at the Barbican. Uh, originally announced in 2000 but delayed because of Covid to celebrate their 30th anniversary. They are playing Five Nights at the Barbican. Each night they are playing two of their albums in full, chronologically. So last night was the first two albums. Um, my plan is, whilst I'm here, to do daily vlogs of what I've been up to during the day. Hopefully show you some records I've bought in various record shops and possibly charity shops. Um, a few snippets, visually, of what I've done through the day. Yesterday was travel day, so there's not a huge amount to show you, but I did think some of you might be interested in my journey up here. So I've, I've done short little clips of the trip up here, um, which I will show you now. Okay, so this is the view from the front of the Gosport Ferry. Mum dropped me off at the ferry, then I headed over on there to Portsmouth. Uh, I used to make this trip every day on my way to school. I thought I'd show you a little bit of the crossing of the water. Only one way to travel up to London, particularly if you're seeing the Divine Comedy, and that's by National Express. So I thought I'd record the view as we left Portsmouth. Again, a very familiar journey to me. This is heading out of the hard on the coach, and we head round past just the wall, sort of to the left of the screen. That's the edge of the dockyard. And then we head round. Uh, going back to a ferry, I had hoped to stand at the back of a ferry and get proper view of the crossing, but unfortunately they were using a different ferry than usual that didn't have an open back that I could stand in. Um, so that's why I sat at the front and tried to get that view instead. But yes, I used to make this trip every day as I went to school up here on the bus. I'll tell you where I used to deviate, but this long road was a daily journey nothing overly exciting but for those of you who haven't been to Portsmouth hopefully you find it interesting always travel by coach to London it's cost me nine pound for my return journey it's stupid to go any other way um yes it takes slightly longer than by train but not a huge amount it's two hours exactly for the journey and comfort and uh, for most of the journey I had a double seat to myself until Guildford when more people came on but yeah very pleasant trip and at that price foolish not to but I recorded going out of Portsmouth all the way up to the motorway because then it gets boring nice sunny day as you can see so yeah, we're just approaching here. My bus used to carry straight on there, past the cathedral on the left. Another thing I know quite well, because it's the Catholic cathedral and I went to a Catholic school. And then we're heading round here. Sort of commercial road, which is the main shopping road in Portsmouth, is directly in front of us. That building you can see it there is the back of the Cascades, which is the shopping mall there. Heading up to where the big car park that's coming up on the right uh, used to be home to the Tricorn Centre, which was a multi story car park with shops underneath it. And it was, I always liked it, but Prince Charles called it a hideous carbuncle. Uh, back of Sainsbury's now, very thrilling, I'm sure. That's in case you don't know where you are. And we're just coming up to the motorway not far now when I stop recording. Just had a little bang then, that was me putting my coffee down. <laughs> So there we go, right, we're now on the motorway, not a huge long clip here, this is sort of 
just to give you an example of the view that we have for about half the journey up to London, pretty much most of the motorway, this is what you can see, just a load of trees, um, but very pretty they are too. Again, particularly for people not from the UK, I thought you might find it a bit interesting. I won't be blogging or vlogging the return journey because I'm literally all I'm doing that day is, is traveling home, so I won't have anything to talk about unless I add it onto the day. We'll see, we'll see what I do on day five and I may add it onto there. Uh, so now we're in London, this is sort of the last little bit of a journey heading up to the coach station. We've just crossed the bridge. And here we pull into Pimlico and round to Victoria. Some interesting sort of shops on the right, lots of interesting buildings and scaffolding. go London double decker bus must be in London that's a nice building I'm not an expert on architecture but we I want to say that row, that little row was Georgian but I might be wrong so the actual coach station is just on the left here but to get to, um, oh, am I right or am I a bit premature? I might be a bit premature here. So the lights. Go, go, go. Yeah, I was a bit premature. So we're pulling into Buckingham Palace Road. Now, so if you, as the name implies, if you carry on straight on down this road, you get to Buckingham Palace. But for the next set of lights that we come up to, the coach station is actually on the left. Yeah, just here. You, obviously you can't see it, but just to the left is the actual coach station. But to get into it, the coaches go in sort of if you like the back entrance and it's sort of a bit of a, a detour route round to it which sort of threw me first time I came oh coach station's there why are we turning right but you'll see most of that journey I do stop it before the end because I got fed up of like, recording us sitting at lights basically First ever time I came up to London on my own was when Prince played three nights at the Hammersmith Odeon on the One Night Alone tour and I stayed in a bed and breakfast which was dingy. I was in the basement right at the bottom, didn't even know that you had to put your key card in the lights to make the lights work, that threw me completely. Um, the cleaners were also working on the same floor you know that's where their storeroom and everything was and they made loads of noise in the morning it wasn't fun never going back there but the reason i'm saying that is that is about four doors down on the left there so if you ever get offered a b and b there don't go for it as i say wasn't impressed stick with the chains now i'm in the premier inn happy with premier inn um so yeah this is sort of behind a load of shops and uh, offices I think where we are now and then I got fed up of recording but basically you come out there you turn left and left again and that's where you get to it and this is just the approach to my hotel as I say Premier Inn, Clapham 
Um, okay, this is my meal I had. Okay, excuse handheldness. Um, basically, I've just recorded my voiceover, realised I ran out of time. So yes, um, once I booked in, I went straight to the Barbican because I wanted to find it, basically. And they've got various restaurants there, and I went to a bonfire, um, which is their burgery-type place, and had the meal you've just seen a picture of. Um, so I had an, a cider, which cost £5.50, in case you're interested. Uh, a cheeseburger, which is a tenner. Then sides of cheesy fries, which is four pound fifty. I will. I love cheesy fries done properly, but too many times I just sprinkle a bit of mozzarella on it. It's only on the top, which was the case with this. And mozzarella is a fairly tasteless cheese. Need some cheddar in with it at least. Um, so yeah, they weren't the greatest cheesy fries. Um, excuse my my socks ready to wear on the bed there. Um, and I went for the side of coleslaw, which as you can saw was a red cabbage coleslaw it was very nice but there was just far too much of it so I only ate about half of that um but yeah ate there then I went down to which I put a picture up I've just forgot I forgot to add that or a little video actually um I went down to sit on the lakeside terrace section which was very pretty whilst I waited for it to be close to show time take over here but yes when I headed to well I was at the barbican already um, but I headed to the venue um, merch was still being set up until just before doors opened um, so I didn't join the scrum waiting for that they've done prints so for the Venus Folly in Time box set which was the 30th anniversary box set which contained all the albums on CD plus a bonus double CD called Juvenilia and each album had a bonus disc of outtakes, demos, live stuff etc. Um, for the for that box set the albums they came in the original packaging well not the exact original because they were cardboard slips um, but then they had a cardboard slip cover outside with new artwork on and they had prints of all those artworks which are very nice and I would love them but I've got nowhere to display them um, so I don't think I'll be getting them if they were signed it would be different but I don't think I'll be getting them but queue a couple of days time and I say that I've bought them um, we should watch this space about that I didn't actually see how much they were uh, that will obviously be a deciding factor because there'll be Ten of them, so if they were ten of each, that's hundred quid, and I don't want to spend that. But if they're doing a special price for all of them or something, we shall see. Um, they have got a new T-shirt that I am hugely tempted by. My only concern is that my I found that Divine Comedy T-shirts tend to be a bit snug, they're not sort of true to size, so they have got them in my usual size, but. And that is sort of the biggest size that they do. Um, so I might get it just to sort of commemorate these special gigs. Um, and it's only 20 quid, which isn't bad for a t-shirt nowadays. So I probably will get one over the next few nights. But we shall see. Um, apologies for shadows and lighting. I'm in my hotel room. It's the best I can do. You can see, you know, it's just overhead spotlights. I've got a lamp up here, which I've tried to direct so it's least bad but it's a funny lampshade that's got splits around it so the light's sort of diffusing out a bit i've also opened the curtains here but i can see it's still shadowy um and possibly the room's a bit echoey where it's not as compact as my usual room um anyway so yeah um headed down about 15 minutes before doors were due to open just loitered a bit, contemplated getting a drink, didn't, wished I had, because um, by the end of the night I was bloody thirsty, um, but I picked up a bottle on the way home. But um, yes, 
found my seat. So for this gig, I was on row C, which is the second row in the stalls. I was seat 19, which was three in from the end. Um, so the, I wasn't sort of directly in front of any musicians. They were all to the left of me, so I was twisted watching them all night, but it didn't make a difference at all. Sound was excellent. Um, and you know, view was excellent. I just couldn't see very well the artists on the left hand side of the stage, but I'll be making up for that through the rest of the week, I'm sure, um, as I'm dotted about the auditorium. So yeah, excellent view. As I say, sound was excellent. First time ever at the Barbican Hall and really impressed. Um, you could feel the audience's applause and reactions as well. It's you know, obviously it's purpose built, but it's the acoustics were excellent and it's uh, just under is it just under fifteen hundred seats? Or just under two thousand? Can't remember. I'll pop it on the screen. Um but you could yeah, you could definitely feel the everyone in the audience is reaction. Uh so yes, it was Liberation, the proper debut album, ignoring the mini album, um, Fanfare for the Comic Muse, and then Promenade. So, Liberation Interval Promenade. The setup was the usual Divine Comedy band, as is at the moment, augmented by a second guitar player, then uh, three strings and two horns, and the horn play is played a variety of different instruments each you know uh, we had definitely had trumpet french horn tenor sax alto sax cornet and oboe i think or maybe not cornet no not cornet ignore cornet but oboe definitely um between the two of them and uh well I'll show you a picture. I forgot. I took a picture beforehand of the layout. I don't take pictures during gigs or record during gigs. I like to enjoy gigs in the moment. Um, but I took a picture of, you, know, you can see how close I'm sat and the layout, as you can see, was a grand piano. As well on stage. Um, but yes, band came on and lights dimmed and then Neil came on, welcomed us. A uh, little jokey intro explained that not to expect much in the way of showmanship and there won't be any flashy pyrotechnics or anything. But they've had 114 songs to learn for these five nights. Then they're doing it again in Paris in a couple of weeks. Um, but they've had 114 songs to learn so they were just concentrating on getting the songs right and then we went into liberation into festive road um it was really special just hearing songs you'd never expect to hear live because you know obviously there's two or three tracks from each album that get wheeled out quite regularly and occasionally another one might be dropped into a set if it sort of fits the theme but, you know, there's some tracks that I never thought I'd hear live that I've now heard live. And the same will apply for the rest of the tour or Five Nights or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, after every song, huge applause. As I say, and you could really feel it coming in through the love, the joy that everyone was feeling hearing these songs. Uh, Neil, in between songs telling us a little bit about what they were about at times, admitting his embarrassment about what they were about at times, his naivety. Um, you know, various nihilisms in between. Uh, Neil, Neil Hannon, who is the Divine Comedy, um, he's, it is his band, he writes all the songs. The early, I mean, Liberation, pretty much, he played everything himself, apart from drums and strings. Um, and Hobo on a couple of tracks, I believe. But, um, you know, all the guitars and pianos and what have you, he played. 
and obviously vocals. Uh, yeah, so Neil is Neil Hannon, the lead singer of Divine Comedy, who is of Divine Comedy. Um, yeah, his usual self-deprecating self in between the songs. The album is 42 minutes, I think, something like that. Um, it took about an hour to get through it with all the between song stuff and then interchanging. That's the one thing that sort of really struck was you're used to the flow of the songs and because at the end of each song it was stop, applause, get ready for the next song, you know, introduction maybe, well, almost certainly introduction. Um, it felt weird at times, one song not going dope directly into another, particularly in the second half of Promenade. Um, but yeah, throughout Liberation, much joy. Uh, Neil had the lyrics on an iPad in front of him. He didn't play, apart from a bit of percussion, he didn't play guitar or anything like he normally does. You know, his job was to get the words right and to sing. Um, hence the addition of the second guitarist. But the band were excellent. Uh, through the whole night, I think there was one noticeable mistake, which was right at the start of a song, and Neil just said, whoa, 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 start again, let's get this right. Um, you know, and it was fine, and a little, sort of little joke was made of it, and there was no, you know, calling out of the error, really, you know. Just, um, Neil had a couple of lyric slip-ups, uh, during one song, he there's a spoken section in three parts, and at the start of the second part, he started to do the first part again, and then realised and stopped and sort of caught up with it. Um, then, in another song, he you could see he'd forgotten, um, but. A quick glance and again he was in and he caught up quickly and then in the second half was one lyric slip up literally one word in one song uh, it's actually my favorite song but you could see him wince as he did it because he realized it was wrong because it didn't work for the rhyme um it's in don't look down and in one pre-chorus it's a couple in the car below and in the next pre-chorus it's a couple in the car above and he sang above both times. But yes, end of liberation, natural standing ovation. You know, no, it wasn't prompted or anything. We just all gave him an ovation as they walked off. 20 minute interval and they came back on and did Promenade, which is my, one of my favourite albums of all time. And it's a concept album. It tells a story. Uh, I won't go into too much details because I covered this in my Divine Comedy album ranking last week. Uh, but yes, he sort of joked that it is this concept album and it's about a couple and it takes place during a day and he's not really sure what the story actually is. It, he's always been bluffing. He doesn't really know. He doesn't think the story really works. But it would make a great film, which is funny because I was thinking that the other day, how I'd love to make a musical film of it. Um, but in between each song, he was sort of trying to explain the plot and, you know, how at times, how shallow the, the songs were and unimportant, really. And how, you know, pointing out the times it didn't really flow properly, particularly at the end. But it was just amazing hearing that in full. Again, songs I'd never expect to hear live. Um, he did the Book Lovers. So the Book Lovers is basically, apart from the chorus bits, him listing authors. And after each one, there's a little sound snippet. Um, some of them are just voices saying hello. Some of them are, are relevant to the type of author they are or some of their work. Um, without actually playing it to you, it's hard to explain. But when he used to play it live back in the day, when he was promoting Promenade, um, he never used to do... They used to just do instrumental verses and then just sing the chorus. But it was done properly, which I wasn't really expecting. Obviously, he had the list in front of him, which was a big help. 
but they had, I don't know if it, I couldn't quite tell, I think it was the drummer triggering them, but it might have been the sound guy, but it, they had the, the little clips after each voice. A couple of times it was a little bit off, it, the sample didn't come in quite on time, but he was happy at the end of it, he said we fucking nailed it. Um, so yeah, it was a real joy hearing that done properly live and all of it, basically. Um, but particularly going back to what I was saying about the songs flowing, uh, at the end of the penultimate track, 10 Seconds to Midnight, it literally segues straight into Tonight We Fly. Um, there's other examples of that on both albums, but this was the most noticeable one. And he even made a point of saying, no segue, applause, at the end of 10 Seconds to Midnight. Um, because he felt that it was a song that was always overlooked because where it always used to flow, it never got the applause at the end of it. So he felt it deserved the applause. Um, but yeah, Tonight We Fly, which is usually the set closer anyway, at any of their concerts, everybody was straight up on their feet, bouncing along, singing along, clapping along. And we stayed on our feet at the end of a gig and they came back on and did, he did hint they might. And obviously the lights stayed down as well. But they did come on and do an encore, which I wasn't sure whether they would or not. Um, and they did Generation Sex and National Express. I've got a feeling I'm going to hear National Express five times this week. Uh, which is no bad thing, it's always fun. But I mean, I would definitely hear it in two nights time when they do Fantasy Eckla. But, well, tomorrow night now because I'm recording this in the morning. Uh, but yes... I've got a feeling that that might be the encore or the other nights. Possibly Generation Sex will be as well, although, again, I've got a feeling tonight we fly might reappear each night. But anyway, um, yeah, much love from us to him and him back. <clears throat> he said at the end of the gig, you know, for those of you who are just coming to tonight, thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Hope you enjoyed it. For those of you c coming to m more nights, Look forward to seeing you. And for those of you who come into all five, you're weirdos. And I'm happy to be a weirdo. Um, if any, last night's anything to go by, I might explode with joy by night five. I just came out with such a buzz. Obviously, having my favourite Divine Comedy album and one of my albums of all time played, um, Promenade was extra special but I just think hearing all these songs played live are going to be such a thrill I mean I've been looking forward to this since the 12th of March 2020 when tickets went on sale and I bought them and last night didn't disappoint and I don't think the rest will um but yes that was it that's that was day one uh I probably won't talk as much about the actual gigs for the rest of the week because I'll have covered a lot of it on this one, apart from the actual songs themselves. Uh, but we'll see. I like to waffle. Um, it depends what I get up to during the day and how much I need to show you of that. But plan for today is in a little while, I will head into the city and do some shopping. Uh, want to hit Berwick Street record shops probably wander down to third man though i'm not anticipating buying anything i don't think there's anything i particularly want unless by some miracle they've got the print sign of the times box sets but i don't think they will um yeah <coughs> excuse me but yeah um other than that we'll see sort of central london area today i'm sort of watching the weather as to what i do each day I want to do the zoo at some point because I always do the zoo when I'm in London. But that needs to be a reasonable day. I don't want to be trudging around in the wet outside all day. So we'll see. But on that day I'll also do Camden. And I'll probably, because I've suddenly realised how close it is to it, um, do Abbey Road. Because I've never done Abbey Road. I know there's not that much to do. But it's nice to say I've been there and do the usual, you know, walk over the crosswalk, tip the crossing. Whatever you want to call it, Zephyr Crossing. I want to call it because that's what it is. Um, probably pop in my shop there, but we'll see. Depends how busy it is as well. Um, but yeah, that's plan for today, as I say, is central London, record shopping, possibly 
other shopping as well. We shall see. I uh, hope you found it interesting. If you stayed this long, well done. And plan is to get these up every day, but we'll see how it goes. Um, thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on my next one. Thanks. Bye. <music>